Hello and welcome into Locked on Wolves, the first ever Locked on Wolves episode that will be on YouTube. Welcome to the show today on this Monday. Today I want to talk all about the three-team trade that went down late last week involving uh, three former Timberwolves targets, trade targets, free agent targets, players the Wolves considered acquiring in the recent past. I want to talk about the impact that that trade has, or at least the perception, the lens with which we'll see the Wolves offseason, as well as a former Timberwolf who's recently traded that apparently will not end up with the team that he was traded to. I want to cover all that on today's show. Welcome into Locked on Wolves. Are Locked On Timberwolves, your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Wolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Locked On Wolves. I'm also the co-editor of Dunking with Wolves, the Timberwolves site on the Fan Sided Network. Today's episode is brought to us by rockauto.com. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. Happy Monday, everybody, and uh, welcome to the show. Today, I want to talk about a trade that went down late last week. Uh, this was a three-team deal that involved three recent Timberwolves targets, players the Wolves considered trading for, and actually, in 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 the case of one player, considered signing in free agency last offseason. So I want to cover those players uh, and talk about kind of the lens with which we can see the Timberwolves offseason. What, what do these recent moves, and also a potential uh, pending buyout, what does that tell us about recent Timberwolves transactions? First, uh, let's talk about the buyout thing. Uh, this was reported by Bobby Marks of ESPN on Twitter uh, over the weekend, said that Juancho Hernan Gomez, former Minnesota Timberwolf Juancho Hernan Gomez, who the Wolves just signed last offseason to a three-year three, a three deal that was worth uh, nearly $20 million, and actually just a little bit over $20 million over three years. He was traded, of course, along with former first-round pick Jarrett Culver, former lottery pick Jarrett Culver, to the Memphis Grizzlies uh, officially last week, but the trade, of course, was reported a couple of weeks ago. Wancho and Jarrett Culver traded for Patrick Beverly. Now it's reported by Bobby Marks that Wancho Hernan Gomez, this is on Twitter uh, on, I think, Saturday, said that uh, Wancho Hernan Gomez was asked not to report or take a physical after the trade to Memphis, which is obviously an implication he could get bought out. Really interesting because he has two years left on his deal, one year of guaranteed money and one year that was a team option. Um, and the Wolves signed him to this deal just last offseason. He, of course, had the uh, had had a terrible season, came into camp last year out of shape. He wasn't the only one, of course, with the, the late ramp up to the season. Um, and then, uh, you know, he had filmed a movie with Adam Sandler last fall, missed the, the, the fall camp that they did in September at Mayo Clinic Square in the Twin Cities. And then came into the season out of shape, ended up contracting COVID-19 in January, missed some games, wasn't in shape when he was on the court. And then this offseason, he separated his shoulder, uh, a fairly serious uh, shoulder separation training with Team Spain for the Tokyo Olympics and was not cleared by Timberwolves doctors to participate in the Tokyo Olympics. Um, and of course, there was this huge misunderstanding apparently between Juancho and his camp and Team Spain uh, and the Timberwolves. Um, you know, Juancho saying the Timberwolves cleared him. Timberwolves saying we never cleared you on the day of the opening ceremonies in Tokyo. The Timberwolves said, no, you can't play. Wancho tried to go around Gerson Rosas in the front office by talking to Glenn Taylor, the Timberwolves majority owner, and, uh, you know, tried to, tried to uh, get around Rosas to be able to play. That was ultimately shot down by Glenn Taylor. The Wolves trade Wancho, obviously on bad terms, trade him to Memphis. And, you know, just a couple of weeks after trading his, his uh, country mate and team Spain teammate, Ricky Rubio to the Cleveland Cavaliers on draft day, both uh, players from Team Spain were traded, and now we hear that Wancho apparently will be bought out by Memphis. It doesn't make the Wolves signing of Wancho last summer look great. Uh, if if apparently that's how low his value was, that he had to be included attached to Jarrett Culver to trade him, and then will be bought out of a, a contract that paid him, you know, or would have paid him roughly seven million dollars this year. Uh, so it doesn't look great, but it also makes the Patrick Beverly acquisition look fantastic. And I, you know, I'm on record as saying that I love that trade. You can go back and listen to any show. Over the past couple of weeks, I think I've talked about Patrick Beverly almost in every show because I absolutely love the acquisition of Patrick Beverly. I think that uh, that he is the perfect fit for this team for so many reasons, and, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this show talking about him because because I've talked about him plenty. But 
trading Wancho and Jarrett Culver, trading two non-rotation guys for one of the better defensive guards in this league still at age 23 and Patrick Beverly and not adding any salary, you know, beyond this year, not giving up any rotation players or any picks to do that and fill a need in terms of outside shooting, fill a need in terms of toughness and edge and the backup point guard role that wasn't previously filled all those reasons. It's a fantastic deal. And, uh, now it looks even better if, if once was just going to get bought up by Memphis, they did this deal for Culver who, you know, he's still got some upside, but he's going to make six, $7 million this year and is absolutely not worth that contract. Um, so it just makes the Timberwolves trade look that much better. And, and sure the Culver pick and the Wancho signing last off season, both of those look worse now. But, um, I, again, I've said this before, but credit Gerson Rosas for admitting a mistake in the Culver pick and also in the Wancho signing, cutting bait and moving on and getting a legitimate rotation guy who started his started for playoff teams virtually his entire career. He's made the playoffs every year of his career, Patrick Beverly, and has started the majority of regular season games over his career by far. Um, to acquire a guy who's a, a three-time all defense, you know, uh, he was an all all uh, first defensive team and, and two times has been on the all defense second team in the league and to acquire him for virtually nothing. Again, two non-rotation guys, a guy who's about to get bought out and Culver, a guy with some upside, but he wasn't going to play this year for the Timberwolves, um, at least in an ideal situation. I, I mean, it's hard for me to fathom how that would not be considered a good thing. So um, kudos to Gerson Rosas for pulling that deal off and, you know, interested to see what happens to Wancha and maybe he decides to go play overseas again. If he gets this buyout, um, you know, I, I think he's still an NBA player. He's a rotation guy. I don't think he's a bad player by any means, um, but I wonder if the combination of the injury with how everything went down, his lack of defense last year, and and, and apparently, you know, uh, maybe not, I, I don't know if not being, I'm speculating now, but if not being in shape at the start of last year has anything to do with his value at league-wide, if, if the league looks at him differently now, I don't know. Um, but I do know that Patrick Beverly is a fantastic player and the Wolves got a really a bargain. Uh, to be able to acquire him for two non-rotation guys who, uh, you know, in, in Wancho's case may not be in a roster next year. And in Culver's case may not be in the rotation for a borderline playoff team next year in the Memphis Grizzlies. So uh, that's the latest news in terms of recent Wolves transactions. The trade I want to talk about, we'll get into this here in just a moment, is the three-team deal between the Cavaliers, the Bulls, and the Portland Trailblazers that came down late last week, Thursday, Friday, finalized over the weekend. I want to talk through the pieces of that trade, the, uh, you know, each actually multiple, you know, three guys in that trade were players that the Wolves had, had been, been linked to either in trade rumors or in, in some cases free agency rumors. So I want to get into all that here next. Before we do that, though, let's talk about our fantastic new friends at Sweatblock. Uh, Sweatblock is, is phenomenal. Um, I just started using it this week, actually. Um, and, and honestly, I mean, there's a few things in life that just aren't fun to talk about. One of them is excessive sweating. And when you're sweating through your shirts for no reason, it's embarrassing. Some of you may not have personally dealt with this, you know, public speaking interviews, uh, important speeches, whatever it might be, uh, or this podcast, I guess now that it's on video, I, I really need to, to pay attention, make sure I'm using sweat block consistently. It's stronger and more effective than most clinical antiperspirants. You simply apply it at night before bedtime, go to bed the next morning, you wake up, wash and go about your day without worrying about sweat guaranteed. I know this sounds too good to be true, but you literally only have to use sweat block once or twice a week. It keeps you dry the entire week. No more pitting out, no more picking your shirts based on which one will hide sweat better. It's doctor created, doctor recommended can work for up to seven days per use. Dry shirt guarantee if sweat block doesn't keep you dry, you get your money back. Featured and tested on the Rachel Ratio by Firefighters. It's been a bestseller on Amazon for the past 10 years, over 13,000 reviews on Amazon. You can wear whatever you want to wear. It's your little secret to confidence. It's a must have for everyone's toiletry bag from big presentations, hot dates, interviews, public speaking. Again, everyone can benefit. If you or someone you love is dealing with this, you have to check out Sweatblock. Get it today for 20% off at sweatblock.com with the promo code locked on. You can also pick it up at Amazon or CVS, but again, 20% off at sweatblock.com with the promo code locked on. That's promo code locked on at sweatblock.com for 20% off. Let's also talk about Indeed. Indeed um, is the best hiring site you're going to find. I mean, general managers ask questions to find the right players in the NBA, like, do they have ice in their veins? Which we all know in the case of D'Angelo Russell, yes. The answer is yes. He has ice in his veins. And when you're hiring, you need to have ice in your veins as well. You can use Indeed assessments to help make sure you find candidates with the skills you need. When hiring gets hard, you need Indeed, the job site that makes hiring incredibly simple. Just attract, interview, and hire. In fact, with Indeed, you can do all your hiring in one place, even interviewing. 
Don't just hope your perfect candidate will find you. Indeed's hiring tools help you cut through the noise to hire faster and smarter. In fact, Indeed Instant Match provides a list of quality candidates whose resumes are on Indeed the moment that you post a sponsored job. With Indeed assessments, choose from 135 skills tests to help make sure you're finding applications from people with the skills you need. According to Talent Nest, Indeed delivers four times more hires than all other job sites combined. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Get started right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked. That's a $75 credit at Indeed.com slash locked. Indeed.com slash locked. Offer valid through September 30th. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and talk about this three-team deal. Um, so the deal, if you missed it, the Cavaliers get Laurie Markkinen in a sign and trade from the Chicago Bulls. Of course, Markkinen was a restricted free agent. We knew that the Wolves had interest in Markkinen. Uh, well, we'll get to this in a second. So I'll, I'll break down the trade first, and then I'll talk about each individual player. So the Cavs get Markkinen from the Bulls in a sign and trade. The Portland Trailblazers get Larry Nance Jr., who, of course, uh, was with the Cavs the last few years. Originally, you know, uh, back a few years ago now, I guess, he was with the Lakers. Uh, Portland sends Derek Jones Jr. and a protected first round pick to the Bulls. The Bulls get a second rounder in 2023 from Cleveland. So the Bulls get Derek Jones Jr., a 2022 protected first rounder and a 2023 second rounder. They send out Markkinen, who, by the way, the key piece of this is Markkinen gets a four year, $67 million contract from the Cavaliers. The Cavs get Markkinen. They send out uh, a pick. They send out Larry Nance Jr. The Blazers get Nance. They send out Jones and they send out a, uh, a first round pick. Um, so a couple things here, Markin is getting four years, $67 million. That's too much for Lori Markin. Uh, I like Lori Markin I've talked about him on the show. I actually, a couple years ago, when I first started hosting the shows, a couple show, a couple years ago, I talked about Markin as a guy who's a great fit next to cat, but he was a great fit on his rookie deal. And my hesitation was always that whoever trades for Lori Markin has to pay him whatever his next extension is. And he arguably, I mean, his three point shootings improved a little bit in some areas he's improved, but you could argue he's regressed over the past three seasons. Remember he averaged almost 19 and nine, 18.7 points, nine rebounds a game, his second year in the league with Chicago. And his usage went down a little bit. He was less a part of what they were trying to do. And remember, this is still a non playoff team in the Chicago bulls. And yeah, Mark a decent rebounder. He's a great shooter. He's got a well, a decently well-rounded offensive game, but he's still a minus defender. Um, and I mean, he's a legit seven footer, but as a minus defender, that doesn't do you that much good. And while he'd still be a great fit with towns at four years, $67 million. No, thank you. That's, that's not what the Timberwolves wanted. Um, and to also, I should say that there was a report here after this came down. I think it was John Krasinski and Darren Wolfson locally, John, of course, with the athletic and, and Doogie with uh, KSTP channel five and score North in the twin cities. I mean, everybody knows the Wolves were interested in marketing going back a year plus, but they also recently engaged with the Bulls or recently engaged with marketing's camp, I should say, on, on engaging interest. But I mean, it certainly sounds as though once Gerson Rosas and the Wolves front office found out what marketing's asking price was, this was a no-go uh, in terms of what what kind of contract he wanted, add in the cost to acquire him. So the thing with, with marketing is it wasn't just paying him and it wasn't just giving up assets, it was both. You had to agree to pay him four years, sixty-seven million, and you had to agree to give up assets to acquire Lori Markkinen. Uh, that, that it just that's a that's a non-starter, a and the Wolves did a did a good job staying out of this thing. The interesting thing about this trade, though, is the other guys in it as well. These are all players that the Timberwolves have had interest in recently. Uh, go back to to last offseason. Derek Jones Jr. was a name. Uh, well, actually, no, Larry Nance Jr. was the first name. We heard about this was last draft night. So I guess we're not even, I mean, as weird as this is, we're talking about last November. So only what is that barely over nine months ago. So it's not, it's, it, we're not talking about last summer, right? The last draft was in November, the, the 2020 draft in mid November, there were draft night rumors that the wolves were engaging with the Cavs and Larry Nance and that they wanted Larry Nance that continued to the trade deadline this year. There were reports out of Cleveland. I think it was the Cleveland plain dealer. Maybe that reported that the wolves were engaged on Larry Nance jr. But the problem was always that he had a great contract after, you know, moving forward. Now he's owed, owed only about two years and, and 20 million. So the Blazers get a pretty good deal in two years and 20 million for Larry Nance. He is, uh, a, I mean, he can stretch the floor. He's improved his three point shot over the past couple of years of his career. He's obviously nowhere 
near a Laurie Markkinen from deep, but he can shoot above league average from deep. He's a better rebounder, shot blocker, much, much better defender, a switchable defender um, when compared to Markkinen, and arguably a better fit for the Wolves because he can shoot threes, but he brings that defensive uh, versatility, the shot blocking ability, the athleticism that Markkinen wouldn't have. Um, and I'm not arguing he's a better player than Markkinen, but I am kind of, I, I think I'm arguing I'd rather have Larry Nance at two years and 20 million than Laurie Markkinen at four years and 67 million. I, I don't know that it's really that close. Uh, but the Wolves wanted to trade for Nance last draft night. We you know, we don't have any other details on, on why that didn't happen, but it didn't happen. They didn't get him at the trade deadline. There were rumors surrounding the Wolves and Larry Nance at the trade deadline, and that didn't go down either. Um, instead, Nance ends up now in Portland. And Portland, interestingly, is giving up not just Derek Jones Jr., and I'll talk about him here in a second, but they're also giving up a protected first-round pick to the Bulls. So the Bulls get Derek Jones a first-rounder and a second-rounder for giving up a guy that was gone anyway. And that's why teams do the sign and trade. Of course, uh, you know, that's, that's why it makes sense for the team. Who's, who's trading someone away. Right. But for the bulls to get a, a granted a protected first, but a first of any kind, a second and a, a serviceable player in Derek Jones jr. For a guy who is never going to be back in Chicago anyway is phenomenal. Uh, the Bulls actually, and they've had a weird offseason. I don't love everything that they've done, the DeMar DeRozan stuff, uh, you know, some of the other moves they've made. I think the Bulls are kind of in a weird spot. Um, and Zach Levine now, there's, you know, they're talking about him changing agents. And I, I don't know what the Bulls, what they're up to. I mean, like, I, they're going to be good this year. They're going to be better this year. But I don't think what they're doing is really sustainable. And, but yet, this was a really smart deal um, to end up with. Derek Jones Jr. and two future picks, one one pick coming this year in 22. That's the first rounder, and then also a second rounder the following year from the Cavs. That's a really good deal for the Bulls. For the Bulls, um, and you know, I'm impressed with what their front office did in terms of Derek Jones Jr. The Wolves wanted Derek Jones Jr. in free agency last year. There was a report. This was a New York Times story. Jonathan Abrams at the New York Times talked uh, just a few months ago. Really, I mean, last off season. Um, so I guess several months ago. Uh, more accurately, that the Wolves were actually the runner-up in acquiring Derek Jones Jr., assigning him in free agency. Remember, he had bounced around a little bit. Phoenix, uh, most recently the Miami Heat prior to last season, had a really good year in Miami, was part of the rotation for most of the year, You know, kind of was eased out of the rotation as they played in the bubble last fall. Uh, but he was seen as a guy who obviously a freak athlete had been in the dunk contest and a, a solid defender, had added a little bit of, of uh, three-point shooting ability to his game. And he, he was sought after as a free agent. The Wolves, the Sacramento Kings, the Blazers were all interested in, in acquiring him. And uh, the Wolves were reportedly the runner-up. And Dirk Jones Jr. seriously considered the Timberwolves, but ultimately he decided to go with the Blazers. And again, this was the New York Times, the Jonathan Ab Abrams article from last free agency. He decided to go with the Blazers because he thought there was more upside there. He thought playing with Robert Covington would help him defensively. It was a two-year deal with a player option on the second year. I, I think it's roughly $10 million this year. Um, and of course he opted into that. Um, and, uh, he opted into it a few weeks ago with the Blazers and now he's moved to the bulls in this trade. He is a serviceable kind of like an eighth, ninth guy. And at 10 million, it, it's fine. He's still got a little bit of upside. He, you know, you'd like to see him improve his three point shot a little bit more. Um, but again, the bulls did really well. And Jones was a player that would have fit the wolves. Well, also. Um, and I mean, you could argue you'd rather have Jaden McDaniels. I mean, I guess all things equal, I would rather have Jaden McDaniels at his current contract than Derek Jones Jr. at 10 million, uh, obviously three more years on Jaden McDaniels, relatively modest rookie scale deal as a late first round pick versus just one year of Derek Jones Jr. But there's some similarities in what they bring to the table, the, the upside, of course, and, and to be clear, the upside for Jaden McDaniels is much higher than that of Derek Jones Jr. at this stage in their respective careers. But the athleticism, the length, the defensive versatility, the ability to, you know, Jaden's got a much, much more polished and uh, versatile offensive game than Derek Jones does. But, uh, you know, the same general sort of skill set Jones brings to the table as Jaden McDaniels does. And, and the Wolves ended up doing okay with that draft pick versus, uh, you know, signing Derek Jones Jr. in free agency. So an intriguing three-way deal um, that that went down on Friday with with multiple former front court and recent, you know, uh, as, as recently as before the trade happened, right? The Wolves were still engaged with Markkinen's camp, a bunch of recent Timberwolves targets uh, who who are no longer on the market, um, presumably. So super interesting stuff. Uh, what I want to do next is I want to talk about the impact, you know, how we can look through, look at the Wolves offseason through the lens of this deal, through the lens of the potential Wancho uh, alleged 
potential Wancho buyout that's coming from the Memphis Grizzlies. And kind of the state of the roster now as we head into the very last portion. I mean, we're only a, a month away, less than a month away from training camp and media day starting um, and getting underway. So I want to cover all that here uh, in just a second before looking ahead to the rest of the offseason. All right, before we do all that, though, let's talk about the title sponsor of today's show. And that, of course, is our fantastic friends at rockauto.com. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why do often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand that their warehouse happens to carry? You have a computer with access to rockauto.com both at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why would you spend 30 to 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. RockAuto.com prices are reliably low for every single customer, and they have everything you could possibly need from brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil to even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today. Find the solution for your auto parts needs. Go to RockAuto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. You can write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. Okay, um, so the Timberwolves offseason, where we sit today, this is uh, August 30th, tail end of really, I mean, there isn't a full month in this NBA offseason, right? I mean, typically we're done end of June, you get the draft, summer league, except free agency in July, and then August and September are kind of nothing, right? Uh, well, we're less than a month away from training camp starting. Um, players are in town. A lot of guys are in town. There's been a lot of stuff on social media the past couple weeks, really the last week, I guess. Um, of Wolves players meeting with new owners. We we saw a bunch of stuff about Mark Laurie meeting with guys in Las Vegas. More recently, there's stuff Alex Rodriguez had on social media of him and Torian Prince and D'Angelo Russell hanging out, um, I believe in Miami, um, you know, and and uh, smoking cigars and just kind of, you know, just, just hanging out together, getting to know one another. The new owners are really trying to kind of ease their way into this thing with the social media presence and some more interviews. There's some great, you know, Chris Hine at the Star Tribune had a great interview with Mark Laurie that dropped this last week or an article that had had some great quotes from Lori. Um, so players are starting to arrive in town. The Timberwolves do a great job in social media of tweeting out photos of guys working out at the facility at Mayo Clinic Square and Target Center. Um, and that's already happening. Um, we're less than a month away from, from media day. Um, so where do we sit now with the Timberwolves? Well, they've still got, you know, both two-way slots are filled. They've still got a couple of actual roster spots full or excuse me, vacant. Um, and then they've got roughly eight and a half million dollars to play with. Jordan McLaughlin's a restricted free agent. Jared Vanderbilt's a restricted free agent. They're both still out there on the market. And we don't know what the Wolves are going to do with their final roster spots. Um, they've actually got three spots left. And the question is, can they bring both of those guys back and add another guy at a vet minimum? Do they focus on bringing Jared Vanderbilt back at whatever it costs, and then you figure out your point guard slot later, whether it's McLaughlin or another vet at the vet minimum to, to be your third point guard? Because right now, your only point guards are D'Angelo Russell, Patrick Beverly, who, I, I mean, I love Patrick Beverly, but he's had injury issues throughout his career, and then McKinley Wright, who's an undrafted four-year player at a University of Colorado, two-way player. So you you really need another guy who could play point guard. I know they've been training or or uh, you know bringing up Jalen Noel to to do some of that. And and frankly, I mean the offense is going to run a lot of it through Anthony Edwards um, and you know, ultimately through Carl Anthony Towns anyway. But you really need another guy who could be your primary initiator, be your primary ball handler in a pinch. Um, so whether that's McLaughlin or another veteran. And then the other thing I talked about last week on the show. Uh, is is the possibility of if Vanderbilt ends up somewhere else. And and I mean, there's not other teams really with cap space, but if Vanderbilt ends up somewhere else, you know, Paul Millsap's still out there and the Wolves could probably offer him, weirdly enough, more minutes than almost any other place. And, and, and Millsap may rather take a vet minimum deal and go play with the Golden State Warriors and have a legit shot at winning a title or any other team that could have interest, you know, Philadelphia or, or you know, I don't know. There's There's several teams out there that could have interest that he could see some playing time and have a better shot at winning a title than Minnesota. But Minnesota could offer him, if Vanderbilt goes elsewhere, Minnesota could offer him $7 million, you know, the, the mid-level exception basically, or a good chunk of that to come and be the starting four. I mean, he could be the starting power forward. Jaden McDaniels could start at the three, bring Malik Beasley off the bench as your sixth man, or maybe Jaden McDaniels is your first guy off the bench at the three and the four. 
And Millsap's your starter. He plays 24 minutes a game, whatever. He's still a great fit next to Towns on both ends of the floor. And uh, obviously long in the tooth, but he'd get the best of all worlds, right? He'd get, uh, I mean, the title chance, I guess, wouldn't quite be the same in Minnesota this year, if we're being honest, but he could get paid more and get more minutes in Minnesota and still have a shot at the playoffs. I mean, that's the goal, right? If you sign Paul Millsap, you think you're making the playoffs. And I, I'm on record as saying, I think the Wolves have a really good shot. If I was making a prediction right now, I think they're in that seven to 10 range in the play in conversation uh, when it's all said and done next spring. I, I think that's where they'll end up. So if that's the case and Vanderbilt ends up somewhere else, then yeah, sign Paul Millsap for seven, $8 million. And you sign either Jordan McLaughlin or another veteran at to, to a vet minimum or, or similar deal to be your third string point guard. And that's the move. Um, that's, that's how you'd finish your off season. Um, and I think that makes a ton of sense sitting here today. I still think it's more likely Vanderbilt's back and it's either McLaughlin or other veteran point guard that's back. I don't know that it's, I don't think it's likely Millsap ends up in Minnesota. I think it's more likely he sits on the sideline and waits until things shake out in December, January. If there's a team with playoff aspirations that he could come fill in for somebody who, you know, gets injured or something like that. But if he wants to sign now, and if the Wolves lose out on Vanderbilt, then then he's an option. Um, those, I think, are the most likely scenarios. And again, as of right now, August 30th, I think it's most likely Vanderbilt and McLaughlin are both back. But we don't know. I mean, the, this thing could go in a couple of different directions. So we'll see how it all shakes out. We'll, of course, keep tabs on it. If anything happens, we'll get up an emergency podcast immediately if, if the Wolves do end up making a significant move or if anything changes. Um, but otherwise, we'll be back on Wednesday uh, here at Lockdown Wolves, of course. A reminder that today's show was brought to us by rockauto.com. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them that Lockdown sent you. And if you're not already following this podcast, um, you can follow Lockdown Wolves anywhere you listen to podcasts. Of course, that includes Apple, Google, Spotify, and the all-new Odyssey app. That's Odyssey, A-U-D-A-C-Y. You can also follow on Twitter at Locked on T Wolves. It's at Locked on T Wolves. Don't forget the T. And at B Beacon with two Bs, two Es. C-K-E-N. I mentioned Apple, Google, Spotify, and Odyssey. Of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, this is the maiden voyage of Lockdown Wolves on YouTube. So right now, three days a week, and then once we get closer to the season, five days a week, Monday through Friday, you'll be able to get this show not only on all your, your typical audio podcast platforms for free, but also on YouTube. Um, and uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess if you don't want to look at my face, listen to it on Apple, Google, Spotify. Make sure you're following there. But on YouTube, uh, we will be there every single show broadcast on YouTube. Um, otherwise, that's all we have for today. Thanks once again for listening, as always, to the Lockdown Wolves podcast. Of course, it's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Remember, the Lockdown Network is your local experts on all the biggest stories. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Locked on Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.